Pastor Mildred Kingsley Okonkwo is a Christian with a conviction that being a woman is a calling and a ministry. She is the lead at Justice Girls Global Network, a movement that brings hope and healing to thousands of women around the world with very specific ministry expressions like Honor's Heart, Kyle, Ruth's Gift, Project Beautiful, Project Boy, and Project Girl. She is the convener of the annual Justice Girls Conference and the host of an online prayer meeting tagged Praying with Pastor M on the new media. She's also one of the relationship coaches at Love Dating and Marriage and a blogger at www.justicegirlsniger.com. Pastor Mildred is loved for her real talk and unique insight into the Word of God. She travels the world with her husband doing the work of ministry and teaching women the very principles that worked for her as during her own years of waiting for a child. She is the author of Justice Girls and All Year Round for Women. She is happily married to Kingsley Okonkwo, her best friend and co-pastor at David Christian Center, and they are blessed with three amazing miracles, Dasa, Davider, and David. Let's make welcome Pastor Mildred Okonkwo at the Gaining Momentum 2020. tonight for me. Just tell him how good he is because he's a good God. He's such a good God. And he's the God who keeps his word. I can't hear you loving on my Jesus. Let him hear your voice tonight. Let him know that you are in this room tonight. Because God has a word for you. It is not a collective word. So it should not be a collective worship. Worship him tonight. I'm talking about a God who is too faithful to fail. Too faithful to fail. I've seen him work over and over and over again. Anytime he gives a word, he brings it to pass. Ah, Kalebo Shatali and the Kedista Brahande Gaista in Kabosa Tabra Hali Katonda Nike de Day, the Ebrahadosha. He's too faithful to fail, too faithful to fail. Hey, Kalebrahande Kisa Tali Yoshta. You're too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You've proven yourself in my life. Now I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail me. How many people are in this room? I can say that God is you're too faithful, too faithful to, to fail me. If he has proven himself in your life, oh, if he has kept his word, you're too faithful to disappoint me. You've proven yourself in my life. Now I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail me. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your presence in this place tonight. I thank you for your word. For it will bring liberty. It will give direction. It will give hope. It will answer questions. And it will open eyes tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, celebrate God as you take your seat this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. Is this really better? Okay. If you guys say so, I trust you. Praise God. So tonight we're going to have an amazing time. As I was coming this evening, um, and I was just meditating on the word, and I was saying, God, 
what's the word you have for your people this evening? And he said to me, tonight, you're not going to stand in your office as a teacher. You're going to stand in your office as a prophet of the word of God. And tonight, I'm just going to flow with the spirit of God. Because I know that God has specific words for people in the house. One of the things I've learned about God, and I think the most exciting thing about God for me is that he's a living God. I know you hear that all the time, so you may not understand what I'm saying. I'm talking about no other religion. I know Christianity is not a religion, but for the sake of argument, let's leave it like that tonight. I'm saying no other religion can boast that their God is alive. We have a God who talks to you in real time. So whatever you are going through now, it is not the word that has expired. He sends you a word in your situation for that time. And he's a saying God. So what he says today might not be what he will say tomorrow. That is proof that we have a living God. It's not some, something that, that was conjured by some people. Even if, even if it was a strategy, it has been on for over 2,000 years. Even if we were all pretending, is it really easy to sustain a life for 2,000 years? I'm telling you that you are serving a living God. So because you are serving a living God, your heart should be open tonight that he's going to speak a living word to you. And that it is a word that you can take with you and do something with. Praise God. So I'm going to start off by some of the things that God has told me will happen this year. Um, I want you to understand what God has planned for you this year. I've shared it, I shared this during crossover. Um, how I saw a vision about this year. But some of the other things that God told me about this year, I'm going to quickly share with you before I get into the crux of what I think God is saying for us this, tonight. So the first thing that God said to me is that this year, he asked me a question. He said, what does 2020 stand for? And at first I didn't, you know when God asks you a question, he, you know that God knows the answer. You know, so if you are wise, you will be like Isaiah and say, I do, you know, Lord, so just tell me. And so I said, Lord, I don't know, what's, what does this mean? He said, but you wear glasses. Yeah, I wear glasses. So anytime I'm not glasses, I'm wearing contacts. So he said, you wear glasses, so you should know. So I said, 2020. 2020 vision. You know, that means you are seen perfectly. And he said, 2020 will be a year of clarity. It will be a year of clear vision. I may not be speaking to everyone tonight, but those that I'm speaking to, you will receive your word. He says it will be a year of clarity. It's a year where you will see clearly. You will not struggle in this year because you will see clearly. Things that will happen in this year, before they happen, the Lord will show you. And the reason why it is important for you to see is because it is only what you see that you can get. 2020 will not be the kind of year where it will just happen, make with a look, anything goes. No, not that kind of year. God will give you just so that you will know that he is the Lord. He will send a word before you and you will see the reality of that word in 2020. It is not a word he will give you this year and it will take 10 years to happen. No, it is a word he will give you this year and it will happen this year. I want to hear your louder amen. And the reason why God is insisting that it will be a year of vision and clarity for you is because some of you have no clue what God has in store for you this year. You have no idea. So I will give you an example, and this was the same example that God gave me. He said, Abraham was trusting me for a child. But what I had in mind was nations. So Abraham said to God, what will you give me? Seeing as you have not given me a child, it is my servant that is going to inherit all these blessings. Because God told him, follow me, walk before me, and you'll be exceedingly great and all of that. And he said, you are, but it doesn't matter what you give me because... I'm seeing now that it's my servant that will inherit it. And God took him outside. Because the only reason why Abraham had not gotten what God had promised him, or what he was believing God for, was because he was not seeing correctly. This year you will see correctly. Amen. So Abraham said, God, 
what will you give me? Seeing as you, this is, this is what I'm seeing. This is my reality. And God took him outside and said, look. That was the first thing God said to him. God said, look. If you can count the stars, look at it. Verse 5. Then the Lord took Abraham outside and said to him, look up into the sky and count the stars. If you can, that's how many descendants you will have. God needed to correct his seeing. This year, your seeing will be corrected in the name of Jesus. And the minute Abraham could see, that see where God is going. I'm looking for a child. And God is giving me nations. Then he connected with the promise. Because the Bible says that Abraham believed God. This year you will believe God because you will see. You see, some of you are trusting God for a job. God wants you to be giving jobs. This year your eye will be open to everything God has planned for you. So this year will be a year of vision. Once you can see it, you can get it. I remember, remember I said it on Sunday, because it's a buffet of blessings. It is only what you see on the buffet that you take. So especially if the buffet is very big. So you may just go to the salad side and think that that's all there is. Fit farm. And you just take egg salad, mayonnaise salad, just taking all the salad, the potato salad. And, you have, and then as you go back to sit there, you do see somebody passing with a soon pepper snail fried croaker fish that is stewed, grilled turkey, chicken. The reason why you didn't take it is because you didn't see it. But this year you will see it. Amen. Every blessing that God has in store for you, you will see it. Amen. And you will be able to take it. Amen. He also said that this year will be a year of light. You will not stumble into 2020. There will be no darkness around you in 2020. But these two will go together. It will be a year of vision and light. Because if there's light in a room and you don't see, you will still be in darkness. So the fact that you are seeing and there's light. Let me tell you why light is so important. And I share this all the time. Because the Bible says that we are children of light. But you see, something interesting that Pastor Gideon said yesterday and it just blew me away. He said you first have to be a lamp in the house before you can be the light of the world. But you see, light is important for a few reasons. From the very beginning, and this is one thing I like to do, I like to follow how God does things. When God saw that the year, well, that's how I interpreted it, that the world was without form and void. For me, I interpreted that the year was without form and void. I don't yet understand what is coming in 2020. And he said, first of all, that the Spirit of God was brooding. And when the Spirit of God finished brooding, the first thing God said was, let there be light. Why? Why? We live in a country where they take light, so you should know why. You know when you enter a house where light is no day, you go first, no first get power. Do, are, are there people in the house? When you enter your house and there's no light, the first thing that happens to you is you lose energy. Once there's light, strength comes. Because you can see, so you know where the problems are, you know where to start from. So this year will be a year of light for you. You will see clearly. There will be no dark areas in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Light gives clarity. Oh. You will see. Light gives confidence. Especially because another thing God told me is that this year will be a year of new things. New positions. New opportunities. New experiences. So if, you, if it's a new thing or a new place that you're entering, if you've never been there before, you need light. If you are entering your house and there's no light, you know where cupboard is, you know where chair is, so you will not enjoy yourself. If there's no light, you shall stumble. You will hold, touch something. You know, same place, suppose there. When I left in the morning, I didn't wash my plate. I left it here. My cup is here. My shoe is here. You know, you can figure it out. But the kind of places God is taking you to, you've never been there before. So you need light. You need to enter there seeing clearly. When you see, it gives you confidence. So you can walk in confidently. Even though you've never been there before, but you can see. And when you can see, it gives you speed. You walk faster when you can see. This year will be a year of acceleration. Ah, I don't have people that believe in this house. <laughs> I said this year will be a year of acceleration for you. The way, the way, the past couple of years has been God drawing you back. <laughs> because God is about to release you. And when he releases you, the speed with which you will go forward. Hey, Kabado, Shatali, and Egedei. Listen, sit down. We're just getting started. God said to me, in 2020, you will not stumble. 
Because you will know where you should go. Where there's light, you know where you should go and you will know what to do. And when there are obstacles in your way, when there's light, you can take them out. So this year will be a year of light. This year will also be a year of the unveiling. Some of you, you've been praying for years. You've been praying for years. You've put in the work, you've put in the effort, you've sown the seed. And it seems like nothing is happening. Please give me Romans 8, verse 18 to 19, the Passion Translation. It seems to you like nothing is happening. It seems like God is not answering. It seems like you've been doing everything you know. But listen, that was just God preparing. This is the year where he will unveil all things. This is the year where some of you will become noticed. This is the year where some of you will blow. Hey, Kalevo Shatari and Egedei. Listen, you've been in that industry for too long. It seems like, where is God? People have started to mock you. They started saying, but you say you'll be born again now. Other people, they do this thing, they walk. Listen, this year, they will know that surely the Lord is your God. Because as they mock you, my God will make you. This is the year that God will unveil you to the world. This is the year of your announcement in the name of Jesus. Just sit down for a minute. Romans 8.18. It says, I am convinced that any suffering we endure is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of glory that is about to be unveiled. Hey. So this, all this, I don't know why God knows they do and sins. I'm tired. He says that's nothing compared to the glory that is coming. And it is in this year it will be unveiled. Yeah. See verse 19. It says the entire universe. It's a global blow, you know. Hey. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. I'm trying to explain to you that you are believing God for a child. God is giving you nations. As I'm talking, you are believing God to blow in Nigeria. God is saying the entire universe. He says the entire universe is standing on tiptoe. Yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and... So ladies, this is your year. This is the year of unveiling for you. Ah, I need people in the house who can believe it. <laughs> because that's the thing that happened. That, that was the thing, the turning point for Abraham. The Bible says Abraham believed God. If you can believe God, I guarantee you that this year will blow your mind. So some of you are believing to blow. It's global blowing. God is not a, He's talking about universe. And you see the beautiful thing about it is social media. All you need is one right moment. The whole world is watching. Yeah. So you may have been laboring since. You have done skits. You have done, there's nothing you haven't done. And God is saying the universe is waiting. But it is this year. This year you will be unveiled. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Listen, my assignment at Gaining Momentum is very unique. For two reasons. The first reason is. Gain Momentum has been on for 14 years, and we've never had a female speaker. Never. And so I was asking God, how come? I mean, I've been here since, so we could have, I could have preached any time. Pasquet is always willing to put that on me. But God said to me that it's the 14th year, so it's the year of double perfection. So all things that I've been, you know, I've been working on, I've been working on, this is the year. That it is doubly perfect. In other words, this is the year where all things are ready. So it says it's no coincidence that it is the same year that God has promised us that there's a feast. That he also sends a woman. How many people know that women cook better than men? <laughs> so tonight, I'm standing fully. In my office as a prophet and as a mother in this house. And people who don't chop my food know how they toast. <laughs> I'm just joking, but let me say. <laughs> I they throw down, my brother. You don't chop my beans, I think. 
<laughs> my gusinko. The fried rice. <laughs> see that? <laughs> Praise God. But what, what, one of the reasons why God said this is so important is because, like I said, God is sending me as the mother of this house. And one of the things a mother does is that a mother sets your taste board and your appetite. So a child that grows up in a house where the mother can cook is very hard, very, very hard for them to eat outside and say food is sweet. Because you will now be able to know what is good and what is not. So this year, it has been announced that it's a buffet of blessings. I came here tonight because I need you to understand what is sweet and what is not. It's not everything on buffet that is sweet, though. Ah. I've disgraced myself before now. I would give you that gist. It's not part of my message, but I'll give you the gist. I've disgraced myself before. Then I was still working with DBN Television. They now sent me to report one. They were doing one oil and gas something. So I went there. I was the one reporting that day. So I sat down. After, every time you go for those kind of things now, there's always buffet. You know, so you sit down. So plenty, plenty of Igbo people. Oh. Everybody on my table was Igbo leave me. So I sat down. They were all speaking English. So they said, and we're going table by table. So we went to the place. So as I sat <laughs> so I, as we got there, two Igbo men were in front of me. They were taking, I said, this thing doesn't look like, see, advice. When you go to a buffet, say, <laughs> shop waiting, you know. If you don't chop for the house, no chop for outside. So I got there, and I saw this Oibo people taking something. So the first one took it and said, oh, have you tried this? It's amazing. The other one said, oh, really? It's amazing. I said, ah, I don't know the name. I just take this thing, amazing. <laughs> now, so I put amazing for my plate, too. I followed them, they sat down. I should have known from the beginning when I saw the Oibo man took only white rice and put that in. So I should have known that his taste buds are not like mine. Because no Nigerian takes rice and just goes to sit down. You know, take stew. You know, take fry. You know, take curry. You know, take fried stir fry. Nothing. He just took that in. White rice. So, and now put that in. Amazing. <laughs> so me too, I now follow them. Took the thing, put amazing on my plate. So they were cutting into the thing. At first, they respect myself. I say, my first chop the thing while I know for my plate. They were cutting into the guy took the guy that they told to take amazing. Now cutting into it and said, hmm, you're right. This is amazing. This is amazing. I say, okay, make I try. And that's why I cut amazing, put from my mouth. <laughs> all my father's school fees. <laughs> all my corona. All my every training my father gave me wasted that day. I just did <laughs> as in. They just turned to me, are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> I turned it into a cough. That was the day I knew that. I don't know the name of that until tomorrow. It's amazing. <laughs> but my point is, <laughs> my point is this. It is the way you eat in your house the, that your taste is set. You know there are some children that grow up, in, and your appetite is set as well. Children who they are giving plenty of food. They are used to plenty of food. If you give your children small food, they'll be, their tummy will adjust. So tonight, I've come to enlarge your appetite. I've come to increase your appetite. I've come here tonight for your taste buds to be exercised. So you know what is sweet and what is not. Because this year goes sweet, oh. Yeah. Ah, this year goes sweet. But I need you to know what is good. Ah, I need you to know what is good. I need to know what is sweet. So I've come tonight to define what all things are. He says all things are now ready. But you need to know what those all things are. So you're not just going to accept just anything. Anything they bring to you, you say it's okay. That's not God's plan. So as I was coming this evening, God said to me, he said, you're not going to come the normal way. He said, you're going to come here tonight as chief cook. So please, can I have my apron? I came to cook this night. And for those who are sensitive in the spirit, I need you to understand that this, what I'm about to do tonight is very prophetic. What your eyes can see, what your eyes can see this night and this year, it says as far as your eyes can see. Hey, if your eyes can see it, if you can taste it, if you know that when this one, when they, when, there's a way the man will come, you will know this one is not sweet. I don't want. There's a job. 
there are some kind of jobs that God will give you this year. I know that you are believing God for a job that they will pay you well and you will close on time. No, God is saying they will also treat you with respect. Because you can have a good paying job, you can close on time, but every time you see your boss, they diminish you. They will insult you because of how much. Some of you are believing God for, ah, this year, oh God, like, please let them pay me 300K, let them pay me 500K. I reject it for you this year in the name of Jesus. This year you will earn in dollars. When they devalue the Naira, it will not affect you. I said I didn't come here to play tonight. I came here to change your taste buds. Not everything is acceptable for you. For other people, it's acceptable. For you, it's not. So when they bring it, you say, this one is not as sweet as I'm used to. My mother's food is sweeter than this. When they give you a job and they say you must naked yourself, you say, no, this one is not sweet. When they give you a job and they say you must first go and beg and humiliate yourself, you say it's not this time. Because when God gives you something, he gives it and he adds no sorrow. He adds no stress. So tonight, I've come here to define what all things are. Give me my apron. If this shoe is disturbing us, we'll pull it. God bless you. You need to be hungry to eat at a buffet. You need to be very hungry to eat at a buffet. And even if you are not hungry, because it's a buffet, you will still eat. Praise God. Please be seated. Give me Luke 14. We're going to start from there. And I'm going to tell you what God has for you tonight. Luke 14. I want to read that scripture again. It's our, it's our foundation scripture for this year. It says, Then he said to them, a certain man gave a great supper. From this scripture, it says great supper. Some other versions say banquet. Some say feast. Some of us say buffet. It says, and he invited many. Listen, God may invite everybody, but he's looking out for you. So the word may seem like it's for everybody, but that word is for you. Listen, let me tell you how important it is to believe a prophet. Yesterday, Bishop Wale okay, went to the mainland, and he gave a call. And he said, there's somebody sick. If you know somebody because you is sick, I need you to come and take this hanky. The same thing he did here. But on the main line, there were three people. So when they came out, they cut the, the handkerchief into three. Now, there's this lady. Some of, you, some, some, of this, some of you will know her. I've not shared testimony with you. Some of you will know her. There's this lady on the mainland church. She's in children's church. She had an accident on the 15th of December. She's been unconscious. She's been on life support since then. Bishop declared this thing two hours after he declared it. Two hours after they took the hanky. One third of that hanky. Her husband took it. This is a woman that has been on life support. She has not opened her eyes. Do you understand what life support is? And they were even telling us that if a human being's consciousness is 10, she's on 3. So even though we were telling people, now me and some of the female leaders, even though we were telling people to pray. You know that prayer that you are praying and you know that if we tell people the real state of things, they will not pray. That's how bad it was. We're at the point where we're almost encouraging her husband to just, you know, believe God, but believe, you know, you know that kind of two hours. Her husband took that hanky and placed it on her and she opened her eyes. You don't understand. This is somebody who was considered dead. Two hours. That is the power of God. And that is what God does. When God sends a word, he backs it up with his power. So God's word has power in itself to produce. When we say all things are now ready, you cannot take it like every, this is the same word they've been saying every year. Say this now my year, this now my year, last year now my year, the year before year now my year, meanwhile no year, don't year. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about taking the word of God as it is fresh, it is hot, like living bread. Hot, soft. And you believe it. Once you can t hold, take hold on the word of God. Ah, one of the things that God told me many years ago when I started believing God for children. He said to me, if you can find it in the word, you can have it in your world. And I believed it. 
I believed it. I knew like I knew my name. Unless God did not say it. If God has said that all things are now ready, I'm telling you in 2020 that all things are now ready for you. So I don't want you to play with the word this year. One of the things God said to me, he said 2020, tell the people they must not underestimate this year. You must not. And Bishop confirmed it. He said, don't joke with 2020. Some of these messages, you need to go back and listen to them. Listen to them every day. Every day. God has given you instruction for the next 10 years. This year is pregnant with what will happen in the next 10 years. What is happening today will affect your next 10 years. That's how serious this is. He says, and he sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, come for all things are now ready. Verse 18. He says, but they all would have called, began to make excuses. First one said, I bought a piece of ground. I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. The other one said, I have bought cars, five cars. I must go and try it. The other one said, I just got married. Listen, don't let the blessing distract you from God this year. And you know why I'm saying that? Because it will be the small, small bits, the small, small ones that you are first tasting that Satan will use to distract you. Because what God really has in store for you is much more than that. It is a buffet of blessings. So God doesn't want you to just be married. He wants you to be married, to have wealth, to have a spiritual life, to have children, to have a great job, to have multiple streams of income. And that person said, I am married. And he went away. He did not collect the rest. This year you will collect everything God has for you. Please be seated. Give me verse 20. And he says, still another said I am married and therefore I cannot come to anyone. And he says, so that Kevin, servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry. Hey. There's no, I, I don't know about you. Me, I hate waste in my life. I hate waste. So I can imagine all the effort that was put into cooking for these people. And they did not even come at all. He was angry. You know what? Whether you like it or not, the blessings you are looking for are already ready. So the issue is, will you come and collect it or not? He says, the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets, the lanes of the city, and bring in the poor, the maimed, the blind, and the lame. And the servant said, master, it is done as you commanded, and there's still room. Do you know what this means? Let me tell you. People will get blessed this year, eh? but there will still be more for you. Mm -mm. You didn't get it. People will get married this year, but there will still be room for you to marry. People will get jobs this year, but there will still be room for you to get more jobs. People will have businesses this year, but there will be room for you to get businesses. He said, I've done as you commanded. I've brought everybody I can find. And he says, there's still room. There's still more. Ah, let me bring that pot. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. See, there's a... I said I didn't come here to play this night. Did you come to take your blessing or not? Did you come here to receive your word or not? The presence of God is so strong in the room. See, my hand is even shaking. I pray I don't fall down this night. You cannot play with 2020. One of the things you must not do this year, you can't die this year. Ah, if you die this year, pay me for you. Because this year, the things that God has kept in this year, I shared with you my vision now. Did I not share that vision with you? God said that every word since 2005, <laughs> he's putting everything together. Everything together. So the years that you even feel you missed out on God, God is saying, even that year, I will restore. I need believing people in the house this night. Can I have that small pot? Please be seated if you can find your seat. I need to show you something. 
Chisom, you walk with me this night. Put that shoe. People that are cooking um, Owambe food, they don't use to. That's, that's kind of. See, uh, you know that there's a. Don't look. The pot is not new because they've used it to cook. That's how you know. You know, pot that is not new. You know, the food is sweet. Mm. Those new pots, it's just shakara. So you see this pot. If I tell you that I'm cooking for you and I'm using this pot, you know there's a way you adjust your mind. So, pata pata, three indomie went a year. And then if I say that I'm cooking for all of you using this pot, some of you will be angry. You know it won't reach you, Abby. Exactly. But this year, it is not a struggle kind of year. Everything is already ready. Listen, I need to say this to you. This is not a year of laziness, but it's a year of rest. What did I say? It is not a year of laziness, but it is a year of rest. So some of you have planted corn many years ago. This year is conflict, so. Mm -mm. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. God is sending you processed blessing. So you know when you plant corn, you expect to reap corn. But this year, when you plant corn, you will reap cornflakes. Hey, I don't think there are people in the room this night. Listen, this year, your work this year will be faith. Oh, and God, oh, God bless Bishop Wale, okay. He said, God honors faith because faith honors God. You know what faith is? Faith is saying that, God, I believe you and I put my eyes on you. If your eyes are on God, you can't be distracted by what's going on. Listen, because this will be a good year does not necessarily mean that it will be a good year for all. Nigeria will not necessarily get better this year. Ah, <laughs> some tough times are coming. This year, there will be some very tough times, but you will not be a part of it. You know why? Because it's not on the buffet table. It's not there. For you, it's not there. So when they bring poverty and recession, say it's not on my table. Oh, I need you to say with confidence, say it's not on my table. So when they come to you and they say, ah, we see your kidney is, you say what? It's not on my table. When they call you and say, you need to be sending money every month because your mother is sick. Well, it's not. It's not on my table. It's not on your table. So this year, this year, Pastor Gideon said something very pivotal yesterday. He said next week, Tuesday, will be 50 years that we, the, end, the end of the Biafra War, which means 50 years that Nigeria stayed intact. Now that marks the year of Jubilee. And you know, at the time of Jubilee, God said that year of Jubilee, nobody's supposed to walk. You're not supposed to walk. It's a groove year. But the Israelites asked a question, because I believe they're like Nigerians. You say, make we don't walk. I will go chop. Yes, now. Because they say, rest now. Somebody will go and lie down. That's why I say this year is a year of rest, not laziness. Draw your ear. Oh. No talk say your mama no train you. It's a year of rest, not of laziness. So they said, how will we eat? You say we should not work. And he answered them. Give me Leviticus 25. See, as if, you know, it's the women that prayed with me at the end of the year that we know that. We've said all these things before. And our fathers just came and were confirming it. 25, give me 19 first. It says, and the land shall yield her fruit. Meaning that this year is not I'm sowing year. This year is harvest. This is your harvest year. You have walked, you have walked, you have walked, you have labored, you have served. We are counting how many years you have walked. And you are looking at your account. It doesn't look like it's the same. It's not matching. But God's saying this year, this is the year it will yield fruit. 
And he says, you will eat your fill. What's that? Buffet. That's all you can eat. He says, this year is a year of buffet of blessing. He says, and you will dwell in safety. So you will not be afraid to show that you are blessed. You know there are blessings that God will send to you. You fear. If I buy a car now, this year is not that year. Drive your car. Do your big wedding. Nothing will happen. He says you will dwell in safety. Ma put this shoe. They disturb me. Me no verse. All those that love me, please don't be angry. They disturb me. They disturb me. Give me 21. If they disturb me, I beg. I don't even know person where they cook, where they wear you. He says, then I will command my blessing. And I told you yesterday, it's a commandment, it's not a suggestion. So it's whether you like it or not, the blessing has been commanded. It must happen. The blessing, and you see the beautiful thing about God. He says his word cannot return to him void. You know his, his word returns. He just doesn't return void. So what it means is that when God says you are blessed, it means that the word must come back to him and say, Sir, I have blessed. Hey. If he says you prosper in dollars, he says, Sir, I have prospered them in dollars. So he says the blessing has been commanded. And listen, he says, you will not walk. You will not walk. Oh. You will not all soon. This year, you will not all soon. <laughs> he says, so this year, you won't say, God bless my house. You will say, God bless my rest. Because it is rest and blessing. He says, and in that fourth year, in that year, sorry, it shall bring forth the fruit for three years. So that year where you know work safe, the money you will make will be three times what you made last year that you were hustling. No, that is somebody's word. This year, you are making three times what you earned last year. God's word cannot return to him void. So if he needs to change your job, he will change it. If he needs to change your boss, he will change it. If he needs to change the policy, he will change it. If he needs to open your eyes to multiple streams of income, he will do it. But this year, you will earn three times what you earned last year. I said to you, I came here to prophesy tonight. And I came here to bless you as a mother. So I need to set your taste right. Sit down a bit. When he says all things are now ready. She's on me, no follow. You know what? Give me salt. Who will give me Maggie? <laughs> you know what? Pour oil. So it says, all things are now ready. So that pot will not reach all of you. That pot is too small. Now, the beautiful thing about when they are doing party, you know, as the jello rice is getting done, you know there's another pot of fried rice. You know that they are frying chicken on that side. And they are sweating. They are doing like this. And everything is making the food sweet. So this year, as I labor in prayer, that prayer, as I do like this, is making your ears sweet. Hey, Kalebo Shatali Aman Listen, this year, everything, everything that the Palma worm and the canker worm have eaten, I said this year is restored to you in the name of Jesus. Ah, Malika Bahando Ho Satali and the Gede Libra to Satali and the Caribosa Lima Cato Satali and the Gari Catosa. Listen to me. I need you to receive this with understanding. Listen. Listen to me. You must enter this year with understanding. It's not hustle year, it's not jumping about year. It is an understanding. When you understand, this is one of the reasons why last year I did the names of God. Because I wanted to show you the different dimensions of our God. Because it is the side of God that you call on that responds to you. Yesterday, Pastor Gideon said something. He said, when you see God for who he is, he shows you who you are. This year, God will show you who you are. Ah, My God will show you who you are. So as 
They are cooking. Why I brought this point out today was when I read that scripture. He said there was still more. I believe that, you know, you know when you see a good party? You know that even as the party is going on inside, you know there are still some people at the back. Ah, yes. going is at the back now. Yes. You don't know regroove. Ah, going is at the back. So people might not see what's happening in the back. But you know that if you are well trained, you know that when your mother is cooking at home, when you hear this sound, you know the food is ready. Hey, and you know that she has, she has turned it from under. Hey, this year, God will give you bottom pot blessings. Listen, listen. Toward the end of the service, I have a few minutes more, but towards the end of the service, I'm going to do something that God told me to do that is very prophetic. Some of you, there's a sound. God is releasing a sound in this season. And that sound is what will turn around your destiny. Ah, you have, you have hustled for too long. Too long. God said to me this year, you will receive the blessings of the 15th year. Listen to me. Hear me, child of God. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is not an emotional moment. Listen to me. I went and I studied what the 15th year means in the Jewish calendar. And I found out that the 15th year means that it is a year of rest. It is also a year of restoration. It is also a, a year of healing. So some of you have been through hell and high water. This year, God will heal your mind. God will heal your heart. God will heal your perspective. Ah, because there's somebody in the house tonight. And you are saying, I'm even tired. See, you can't be tired. This is not the year to be tired. This is the year to have energy to collect all that is rightfully yours. So I'm going to ask you to go back to your seat because at the end of the service, you're going to do something. Let me quickly show you what all things are. Uh, I'm going to read a few scriptures with you. I need you to write them down. I need you to meditate on them. Hebrews, Hebrews 2.8. Let's do this quickly so that we can pray. And he says, this, uh, I know you heard all things are now ready, Abby. So I asked God, what are these all things? He said, you gave them authority over all things. This is God answering me. God says, now when he says all things, it means nothing is left out. Do you understand? So that all things means, don't, this year don't manage for God. This is not that kind of year. This is not that kind of year where you say, God has given me children. So let me just, God has given me a good job. If you want more, it is eat all you can. So save that's why it's a buffet. Nobody's standing there and saying, take. No, guys, only two meat we serve here. It is what? Eat all you can. Because somebody's at the back. Still turning it. There's still something on the fire. So as much as you want, God is still producing it. He said there was still more. He said, so when I say all things, it means nothing is left so you're going to do something for me this year. You're going to write 20 things. I'm not saying, this, listen to me. This is not business as usual. This is not what? So you're going to write 20 things that make all things for you. Every single thing on that list will be struck out by December. That word is for somebody. Give me Second Peter 1.3. I want to show you. He says nothing. He means nothing. God doesn't miss words though. God says exactly what he means. He says nothing is left out. Second Peter 1, 3. Because when you are saying all things are now ready, I need you to understand what that all things is. He says as his divine power has given to us what? Are, are, are there people in the house? Has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and virtue. So his divine power has given. That's why I said this year, eh? God is the one doing it. You just need to show up at the table. If you are at that table, you will get. He says it is his divine power that has given to us all things that pertain to life. As far as that thing pertains to life, it is part of the all things. 
Is mo does money pertain to life? Yeah. And so this is not yet to be, uh, we're trying to be holy. We can't ask God for more than what we need. Story, this is a flexing year. Yeah. This is what? A flexing year. This year, fly business class and don't be afraid. But it's through the knowledge of him. So this is still a year of Jesus. Your eyes must be on Jesus. Because he's the light. And if we follow the light, we will not stumble in darkness. So he says it pertains to life and godliness. He put that godliness there because there are some people that, there are some blessings that will carry you away. Not this year. Ah, God will bless you and you will, ret you will retain your integrity. You will retain your integrity. Your self-respect. He says everything that pertains to life. If it is health, it pertains to life. Husband pertains to life. Good wife pertains to life. Good job pertains to life. Blowing pertains to life. It pertains to life, oh. Because when you blow, it's to help things. Because when you blow, you still blow. The more you blow, the more you blow. That's just how it works. So when they are looking for somebody, and these days people are so fickle. So I say, when do, you, when do you want to give you a job? Do you know these days they check whether you are verified? Yeah. It's the entertainment people that know what I'm talking about. So this year you will blow. Yeah. So that you will blow. Yeah. So this year is blowing on blowing. Yeah. Ah, it sounds like I'm joking, but as Bishop said that day, even the joke of a prophet is a prophet. says divine power is given to us all things. That pertain to life and godliness. So this year, if it pertains to life, God has given to you. That's part of your all things. John 17 verse 10. You put my scripture, so be fast. It says, and all things that are mine are yours. Everything that belongs to God belongs to you. He says, the silver and the gold, which means the silver and the gold the cattle on a thousand hills. Many businesses. Everything that you require, God has it, right? So he says it's mine. Don't also. This year is okay to be like the prodigal son. Collect what is yours. Say, give me that which falleth to me. Now you, because you have sense, you will not waste it. But you can ask for what is yours. Don't be like the senior brother. He was angry. He said... Your son, I've been here serving you. And that's what a lot of us do. This is not that year. A lot of us do that. So we have been serving God. See how God is blessing that which they come. He just come, but he asked for everything that fall to him. And God's answer is always yes. So the person just came, you are angry. But you, you have been there since you did not ask for calf. You didn't ask. When everything, he said all things, all things, all things that are mine. Everything that belongs to Jesus. You see, that's why the Bible says that we are joint heirs. People don't, under, you, a lot of times we don't understand what that means. He's, a, he's my brother. I'm his next of kin. You, do you know what that means? When he was going back to heaven, he left everything to me. I'm his next of kin. I am joint heirs with him. He's not here on earth physically. So who needs the cars? Who needs to stop paying rent? Everything he has. And if he needed something, he would just say, go and collect it and tell them the master has need of it. Some of you need to say this here. Tell angels, go and bring me that job. The master has need of it. So this is a year where you will send your angels. Some of your angels are fat. Mine is very athletic. That's why I'm not looking athletic. Because my angel does everything for me. Send your angels on errand. They are your servants. You're doing as if angels as worship you. When you just see them standing there and say, oh, but you don't get work. Go and look for money for me. The master has need. There's a way you will cook into me this year. As a single man, you just say, all these angels, come, go find wife. Where's a big cook? The master has need. Not every time you come and visit Pastor M. Praise Lord. <laughs> I know I know Luku now. Now I call her name. Philippians 4.13, our scripture for last year. I want to do this and then I'll do what God has said I should do and then I will come down. 
He says, I can do it's part of the all things. All things. Anything you did not do last year, remember, God is combining it. It's a restoration year. So that word is still valid. That word is still valid this year. It says I can do all things. All things. Romans 28. Romans 8, 28. Oh, all things. Somebody say all things. Somebody say all things. Somebody say it like you believe. You say all things. He says, and we know. Hey, there's a knowing. And that thing only comes to pass when you know. There's a knowing. It's the way I knew like I knew my name. That no matter what doctors said, I will have children. I knew like I knew my name. I knew it. It's the same way when I was getting married to Pastor I knew like I knew my name that he would have money one day. I knew it. I knew that he would be relevant. I knew that he would be he, not, not relevant. He will always be relevant. 50 years from now, you will call his name and people will still say, oh, that man that teaches relationship. There are some things that when you know, he says, and we know, that all things, not some things, oh, all things work together for good to those who love God. Listen, if it's not working for good, it's not part of your all things. I need to say that again. Somebody needs to hear that. If it is not working for your good this year, it is not part of your all things. So when any bad thing comes, just know that it is not yours. Mark 9, 23. Somebody shout all things. Somebody shout all things. Oh, and Bishop Wale, okay, defined what those all things are. I say they are great things. So no ordinary thing will happen for you this year. They will all be great things. Ah, I'm not feeling your amen. It's not even born again. Now, this is the clause. Apart from excuses, this is what will keep you from getting what you deserve this year. He said, and Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible. You know why? Because all things are already ready. They're already ready. We have served table. See, this part does not concern you. This part is not your business at all. This cooking part is not your business at all. What is your job this year? Is to show up at the table and serve yourself. So when you get to that table, this is not a year to wear waist trainer and package yourself. It's not. It's not. Not in the physical though. Some of us need to help ourselves. Not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying this year. It's not that kind of year in the spirit. It's not the year you cannot be on a diet in the spirit. No. This is not fit farm year in the spirit. No. This year is eat all you can. So you will come with the largest appetite. The Bible says open your mind wide and I will feel it. So you're not going to eat. I mean, oh, Father, you will open everything. Losing your belt. Ladies, wear boo-boo and show up at the table. And even when you are full, keep eating. Keep eating. What did I say? What did I say? What did I say? This year, don't get tired of asking God. Because God will not get tired of giving you. Three things this year that you must not do. Number one, you must not walk in disobedience. Anything that God has told you this year, even if it sounds crazy, there are a lot of things you will do this year that you will do it afraid. It will not make sense. It will not make sense. But just move. And God will meet you halfway. You know why? Because we serve an Emmanuel. He's the God who is with us. He will never leave you to go alone. Never. If anything, he goes before you like a consuming fire. And then he clears the way so that when you come, you defeat your enemies. But you know that it is not really you that fought. It's just that we have to show, somebody has to collect the price. So God fights, but he never really collects the price. He lets you come and collect it. So this year is that kind of year where you need to stay obedient. When God says do something, do it. Bishop Wale okay, said, so 20k. Some people, some people don't log out. Oh. They say, so waiting. They don't come. Preach, may they go. 
Ma bring 20k again. So next year go be 21. Now so now go to increase until you reach 50. See, I'm a human being just like you. So anything you think, Jesus said he knew what was in their hearts. So that's the way they think. I think I'm past you, Seth. So now so you're going to increase more time. 20, 50. Now so they, all of us go give 50k. A day, they wait them. A day, wait. When God gives you an instruction, follow it. Don't ask questions. Don't debate it. Don't negotiate it. It's 20. If I when he said 20 guys, say, if I'm my I say, this man they play 20k. Wait till be 20k. I bet me tell us no, so 200k. And he said, look for it. Because some people, some people will remove themselves because of the excuses. He said, I want to see 20k, I no get. I'm believing God. He said, look for it. Look for it because that 20k is pivotal to turning things around for you. So look for it. So the first thing, do not disobey any instruction this year. Some of you need to be more sensitive in the spirit. This year will be a year of intercession for a lot of us. We're going to pray like we've never prayed before. If you think you've prayed before, this year you will pray. But this is also the year you will hear God clearly. Ah, there will be so much clarity this year. I sense in my spirit with so much clarity. So much clarity. The second thing, don't doubt. I've said it before, don't doubt God. This is not the year to doubt God. It doesn't make sense, don't doubt. Don't doubt God. Just believe. Just believe. Abraham said, give me one. God said, nation. What made the difference was that he didn't doubt. He believed. He hoped against hope. It didn't make any sense to him, but he still believed that God is able to keep his word. God is, God is the kind of God that can be trusted to keep his word. He believed. Does it make sense? I say, give me one. You say, make I give you, that will give you nation. Give me one first. That's the, human, that's the human response to anything. So when God says, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless you with this, I'm going to bless you with that, and God doesn't talk small, small. How many of you know God doesn't talk small, small? <laughs> You're like, God, just, just give me, see, just find me small something. Let me fair hold down one. God is like, no, I'm giving you nation. Say, give me one, Isaac, one. Just give me one, nah. Why don't hold this one? I told I told I ain't bad, Pastor Abby. Because half loaf is better than one foot chin chin, Abby. Just give me that one, one. Make a whole lamb. God will say, no, I'm giving you nations. So God will speak to you in superlatives this year. He will speak to you in uh, what I'm going to do for you, what I'm going to do with you, what I'm going to do. And your mind are like, hey. But you know that he's the God that doesn't make empty threats. He doesn't boast. He doesn't just make those kind of empty boasts that I'm just in the mood to. That's not the kind of God we have. I'm trying to condition your taste buds. Only the best is good enough for you this year. Only the best. If it is not the best, don't accept it. If they are giving you 250 and they are giving your colleague 500, don't agree. This year is okay to be greedy. Don't agree. Because all things are ready. It's already there. You're just not collecting it. So you see me cooking with this big pot, you now bring saucer. Are you joking? If I'm here and you even say you didn't bring plate, you just brought your hands so that small thing will reach your hand, I will understand. But if you see me standing by this pot, I say, Mommy's cooking. And Mommy does, food is ready. And you come with saucer. Are you joking? Some of you should come ready to carry the whole pot. So this year, don't treat this year like any other year. The third thing this year, do not allow yourself to be distracted by anything. Anything. Oh. This year is not that kind of year. Um, let me read the scripture. Oh, this year is not that kind of year. Don't allow yourself to be distracted by anything. Your heart must be in the right place. Listen, there are people that will offend you. And it is not even the offense that is the problem. Satan is not after just making you cry. Satan is after dislodging you from the promise. And the only way he can dislodge you from that promise is if he can, he can distract you. He will distract you with unforgiveness. He will distract you with bitterness, distract you with hatred, anger. Those things, eh, because they are, not, um, physical, they are not physical sins, you may take it for granted. So and I don't just want to excite you. I don't just want you to shout and jump. I need to be conscious of the things that will remove all of the prophecy, prophetic words over your life. Distraction is one of them. You have plans this year. If Satan brings you a lesser plan, listen, Ishmael was a son. He was just not the son. There is a son 
and there is the son. So there is a job and there is the job. There is a husband and there is the husband. So distraction is what he does. So he will bring Ishmael. But once Ishmael shows up, it means that Isaac is around the corner. So you need to stay true. You need to, you need to be patient. You need to be patient. I want to read you a scripture because I need your heart to be in the right place. You need to know that this is the most important thing. The most important thing. That your heart is in the right place. That you're not distracted by anything. By anger, by jealousy. See what God has done for this person. He has not done for me. All, all things are yours. If you want, go and take. Stop whining. Oh, when God hates whiners. How many people have little children here? You can sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> they say, how oh, we still stand up. <laughs> how many people have little children here? I have three kids. Little kids. I can't, you see... It's things like that make me know that God is good. I can say I have three kids. Me that they say I will not have half. Even miscarriage is I will not have. <laughs> ah, this is our God. Who knows ever I pity you? Hmm. Oh. Sometimes when they want something, sometimes when they want something, they will start they will start whining. I can't hear you. What do you want? I know. I I can't hear you. Why are you whining? I can't hear you. You know that that's how it sounds to God when you're complaining. So you see all those prayers you are praying. He can't hear you. He can't hear you. Just say. So I tell them, calm down. And tell mommy what you want. You say, I, so I wanted to take that ball. I just announced the ball. Mommy has three balls. Go inside. Take any one you want. But until you stop whining, God can't show you what he has for you. Because you are there whining. That this girl just joined church. Which day he come? You don't marry. You don't born. Me, I'll be here serving you. I day ushering. I day choir. I day guitars and guitars. Only me. I go sweep. I go clean. I go wash. And God is saying, I can't hear you, darling. I can't hear you. So this year, your, your heart has to be right, though. Because this year. <laughs> Radio. I didn't come here to play. So he says, I use this to take over my fine clothes. If you are not blessed this year, me and you quarrel. Because he has commanded the blessing. So if you are not blessed, it means you are, no, you are, you are stubborn. Or you are disobedient. And this year, you will not be stubborn in the name of Jesus. The blessing has been commanded. And there is nothing you can do about it. So this year, you must be blessed or you must be blessed. So I want to read, I want to read Luke 8 from verse 16. Eight, yes, chapter 8 from verse 16, TPT translation. It says, no one lands a, lights a lamp and then hides it, covering it over or putting it where light won't be seen. Remember I told you it's a year of light. It says, no, the lamp is placed on a lampstand so that others are able to benefit from its brightness. This year you will shine. Uh, God will use you to pose this year. This year, the blessings of God will not be hidden in your life. Even if you try to hide it, it will still show. Once you enter a new position, listen, God has said this year, listen, listen, this year, this year, a lot of you went into new offices. And the grace and the confidence with which you will use to do the work in that office, they will come and ask you, what are you using? And then you will tell them that the Lord Jehovah, he is my God and he is my backing. Listen, God will use you to shine. This year, your brightness will not be dim. You will not be covered. It will be impossible to hide the blessings of God. The kind of blessings that God will bring this year will be the ones that people will be sharing your testimony for you. Have you ever been in a place and somebody sharing your testimony and they don't know it's you? Ah, there's this woman. She's a pastor's wife. She has been waiting for eight years. Ah, God now gave her three children. I was standing there. Somebody was sharing my testimony. I said, that's our God. Your light will not be dim. 
You are a city set on a hill. You cannot be hidden. Cannot be hidden. Verse 17 says, because this revelation lamp now shines within you. It says nothing will be hidden from you. This year you have clarity. Oh. Ah, you will have clarity. It says all will be revealed. It says every secret of the kingdom will be unveiled. Remember, I told you it's the year of the unveiling. Things will be open to you. And it says it will be out in the open. Made known by the revelation light. Look at verse 18. It says pay careful attention to your hearts. To your hearts. To your heart, as you hear my teaching, for those who have open hearts, even more revelation will be given to them until it overflows. And for those who do not listen with open hearts, he says, what little light they imagine to have. That small blow where you see, say, don't blow, they will quench your light. God is saying your heart. If your heart is in the right place this year, there is nothing, nothing that you cannot achieve. Nothing. So what, are the, what, are, what is your all things? What is your old things? Some of you are entering new things. Ah, I, I can't, I'm seeing new, new offices, new positions. I'm seeing people in new, new positions. Some positions you don't even think that you deserve. Some of you are getting new jobs. Ah, it's not, it's not that kind of year. Oh. It's not that kind of year. Give me Ezekiel 12. It's not that kind of year. Because I know every year has passed. And I'm going to do something. I'm just going to read that scripture. I'm going to do something that God asked me to do. And then I'm going to come down. Because it seems like every year. Every year you've heard this word. Every year, every year. Every year is my year. Every year. Ah, I, and I know, I know it can be a hard place. Ah, because every year people come and prophesy. God is going to give you children. You are a mother of nations. You are a clinical. I say, may give me miscarriage, seven, the talk of nations. May even give me one, one. May even get the belly, man, no her feet. They prophesied for years. It took me eight years. Eight years to see the reality of God's word. But listen, it's only a matter of time. If God has said it, it's only a matter of time. God can never. He's, see, he's not a man that he should lie. It means that God cannot. God, God lacks the ability to lie. So even if he wanted to lie to you, if God tells you something and it, it was supposed to be a lie, it becomes the truth. If God even was joking with you, that joke becomes the truth. So if as we are this night, God enters here and says, Good morning, darlings. You go see sun, we go shine for outside. That's the God I'm talking about. That it is impossible. So if God has given you a word that all things are now ready. See, there's some things that will be jamming your brain. Say, it's not for me. Include it. That's the very all thing that God is talking about. Say, all things are for me. And all things are ready for me. And all things are now ready for me. See, Ezekiel 12, beautiful scripture that Messi shared with me a few days ago. <laughs> it says, again, a message came to me from the Lord. He says, son of dust, what is that proverb that they quote in Israel? That the days as they pass make liars out of every prophet. What does this mean? It simply means that every year they've been talking, you know, they've been prophesying, prophesying. But as the years are passing, it's not coming to pass. It now seems like there are no more prophets in the land. Listen, as surely as God lives, as surely as my God lives, the prophecy of God must come to pass on your life. Yeah. Give me the next verse. It says, no, give me 20, 20 soon. Okay, yes, this verse, sorry. Go, go to the next verse. It says, then the Lord God says, this is God saying. He says, I will put an end to this proverb. That means you will soon stop saying it. You will soon stop saying every year, neither they promise or say this is not the year. This is the year. He says, give them this one instead. He says, the time has come. For all, for all things that have been prophesied to be fulfilled. He said the time has come. For everything you've ever heard. Every word of prophecy that's ever been spoken over your life. He said the time has come. I'm telling you 2020 is the year. Ah, 2020 is the year. Ah, malekebo shatali anegedede lebratosa. Lift your hands to heaven and begin to pray in tongues. Give me 24. Give me the next verse. God is not done. God is not done. In Jesus' name. He says, then you will see what will become of all the false predictions of safety and security for Jerusalem. Give me 25. He says, for I am the Lord. What I threaten. 
See, uh, you need to understand English for it to be sweet. See, he didn't say what I promised you. He said what I threaten. God is not joking with you. He says what I threaten always happens. He says there will be no more delays. So every delay is broken in your life in the name of Jesus. And he says, listen. He says, I will do it in your own lifetime. Kalebo Shata. Give me 26. We serve a God, though. A living God. If you don't know this God, you've not started. He says, then this message came. Son of dust. The people of Israel say his visions won't come true. I told Pastor Kay, I said, interestingly, this year, God has started speaking to me more in visions. He says, they say his visions won't come true for a long, long time. 28. He says, therefore, say to them, the Lord God says, all delay has ended. I will do it. So all things are now ready. You need to take it. Hey, Calibra Hanokosha. Le mande bratoru sekeli ande gede. Libra tosha kali amanda de nibosa. Hey, Calibra halo zadali ande gede. Le kado sekere bosha tali ande gede. Hey, Calibra halo sakali ande gede. Le kere bosha tali ande gede. Return to think about every word that has been spoken over your life. This is the night. This is the year. This is the time. All things are now ready. If you be, as we prophesied over you, that you will get married, you will get married this year. You will have your babies this year. You will have that dream job this year. You will buy your first house this year. You will build those estates this year. Hey, Kalusa Tali Amandegade. You will handle your millions this year. You will handle your billions this year. Kayele Bosha. All delay has ended in the name of Jesus. Hey, Kayuso Tolia. Libra Hando Satali Akadede. Raka Bado Shikataye. Hey, Limanda Kariba Hadadosa. Yekeli Sata. Embra hado shekelele, libra hado sakat hayale. God says, I will do it now. All things are now ready. I will do it now. All things are now ready. I will do it now. All things are now ready. Every delay is broken. Every delay is broken. E kaya rabosha. E li kabahande gede. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Before I do what I want to do, and we close. I need to, I need to pray for some people. Let me give you a chance to be a part of this. You cannot not be a part of this. Uh, if you're not, can we sit down? We'll pray now, we'll go. I just came here to, to, to set your taste buds and your appetite. You deserve everything that is good this year. You deserve the best this year. Don't settle for anything less. For years. <laughs> One of the things I, I, I you know, Amaka said this year, I was a bit embarrassed though, because that's what she was trying to do, trying to embarrass me with all the introduction and everything. But One of the things I know about God was one of the things he told me when he called me. He said, your words will never fall to the ground. Once you say it will be done. So that's why I, I avoid saying negative words. People, know that, people, people that are close to me know that people don't offend me. If you offend me, I might not even know. My spirit is fighting you. And my spirit is strong, man. Kai. Even me, sometimes I'm afraid of the things that God does for me. And that comes from knowing your God. Say, they that know their God will be strong. So it's not that I boast in myself. I boast in the Lord. That I am strong in my God. Because I know him. I know what God can do. So sometimes if we want to do something, I'll say, don't offend me. Don't look for my trouble. Don't let Satan use you as the agent. Don't let it happen. But it also means that when I speak a blessing, it comes to pass. Because the whole of heaven. And it's the same thing. Because God's word in your mouth is just as powerful as it is in God's mouth. So as I'm speaking to you tonight, what I want you to do is to get into God's word. I was telling somebody today, I, I, I was literally salivating as I was studying the word. I was telling, I said, the word of God is sweet. Bible is sweet, or is it sweet? <laughs> Some people don't know, because you don't read it now. If you read it, you will know that it's sweet. The word of God is sweet, because there's nothing you are looking for that is not here. Shabby, you were angry now, God just told you, say, see, I know what you have been saying, see, I've done it. There's, no, there's nothing, there's nothing that is annoying you that God doesn't have answer for. There's nothing, nothing. So I want to give someone a chance tonight to get to know him. So we can pray and leave this place. Because what God is about to do, it's not inside here, he's going to do it. He's doing it as you are going. So on your marks, set. 
So as you step out this door, miracles begin to follow you. Miracles begin to follow you. Hmm. I want to give someone a chance to give their heart to Jesus tonight. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. If you've not given your heart to Jesus, I need you to do this quickly. We don't have time so that we can do what we actually came here to do. But we want you to be a part of it. I want you to be connected to the family of God. Because that's what makes you a joint heir. Joint heir means that, you know, he's your brother. So we, you have the right to what he has. But if he's not your brother, then you can't. And if God is not your father, then Jesus can't be your brother. So tonight, I want to give you a chance to give your heart to Jesus. If there's anyone in the room, I want to do this quickly. Or you know that your relationship with God is not the way it should be. I want to pray with you. Can you raise your right hand? All eyes closed. Except you're the one making that decision. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Can you raise your hand? Let me pray with you. I want you to take a bolder step and stand. Let me just pray with you. Can you just rise to your feet? Let me pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. In fact, come and stand with me. Just come and stand with me. Let me pray with you. Let me just pray with you quickly. This thing won't take you more than three minutes. And you are just, your name is now, your birth certificate will be written tonight. Your birth certificate with God at the end. Please your hand on your chest if you are making that decision. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you took my place on that cross. And because of that, I am born again. I give you my heart. And I ask for your spirit that it begins to live on the other side of me. That you give me the strength to serve you all the days of my life. Today I declare that I am born again. I have been reborn. I am now a member of your family. I am now a child of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Simple. Your best certificate is already written. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Um, can you look? Okay, please look at that, brother. I just want to talk to you quickly. But you know what? I need you to just stand with them at the back so that we'll do what we'll do, pray, and then you can take them later, and they will talk to you for a few minutes, and then we're done. Okay? Can we celebrate? Hey, you understand? Babies are born in the house tonight. Come on, celebrate God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to just read one last scripture, and then we're going to pray. This year is so good. Ah, it's so good. This is what God said I should declare this night. Look for. Um, I'm reading message translation. It says, God's spirit is on me. He has chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor. He has sent me to announce pardon to prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind. I told this year is a year of vision. It's a year of restoration. To set the burdened and battered free. And to announce, this is God's year to act. This year, my God will act on your behalf. Everything that you've ever dreamt of, everything you've ever prayed about, everything you've ever cried about in the secret place, nobody else knows, only you and God. This is God's year to act on your behalf. Oh, I thought I'd hear more believing, amen. Amen. I'm telling you, this year, God will act on your behalf. Some of you may not understand this prayer now. But sometime middle of this year, you are going to have an issue with your boss. And you are not going to have anybody to go up to, to report your boss to, except God. And my God will act on your behalf. Some of you are going to have family issues this year. But God is going to act on your behalf. Listen, God told me something. He said, every time a mother is cooking, one of the ways you know, because a mother cooks with love for her children. If she's good for her children, uh, they would debone. If, it's, if they are cooking fish, they remove every single bone inside the fish, especially if it's a baby. You remove every, when I mean every bone, every, men will not understand this. Mothers in the, are there mothers in the house? You cook with tenderness. You wash your hand a million times. Am I right? 
wash your hand a million times. You take, you take note of everything, the freshest of ingredients, the best things possible. Everything is perfect. And then when your mom is finished, when you're grown, when you're much older, and your mom has finished cooking, when she's turning, when she's turning pots, there's a sound you hear. When she makes, there's one sound that you hear with print on this. You know that she has tasted it and it's now sweet. It's now ready. But she's now doing that sound so that you know that everything that was, even the ones, nothing is missing. So everything, even the one on the spoon, enters inside the pot. God said to me tonight that I'm going to hit this pot. It's a prophetic act. Not something I'd have probably come up with myself. Never thought about it. He just said, when I hit that thing, he wants you to shout a shout of victory. Listen, that shout will trigger something. Hey, Le Kabadosha. Listen to me. He said that shout will trigger something in the spirit. The, even the blessings that were supposed to fall on the side. Not one thing that God has vowed to give you this year will be missing in your life. That sound is a sound declaring that your blessings are complete. That nothing is missing. That nothing is broken. That nothing falls to the side. And it also declares that everything is now ready. So when you hear the sound, and I'm not, he didn't just say I should hit it all. He said I should stare. So that means even the bottom part blessing. Hey, how many of you know that that's the sweetest part? So what that means is that the year will not start out good and end badly. Even the end of this year will be sweeter than the beginning of the year. I'm not hearing your believing amen. I said even the end of your year will be sweeter than the beginning of your year. Listen to me, by the time you get to the end of this year, you will not recognize yourself. We do not serve a God that makes empty threats. Listen, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God. He said the end of this year, you will not recognize yourself. And it will only happen because you believe. So I need you to stretch out your faith tonight. I need you to start to pray in the Spirit. As you start to pray in the Spirit, I need you to visualize what your all things are. What that thing, that thing that has been, it just seems you have been moving it into the year. You keep moving it into the next year. You keep moving it into the air. I declare to you, this is God's year to act. I need you to get ready with your victory shout. Nothing will be missing from you this year. Hey, Kalusa Tali Amanda Gede. Leker Ibrahano Shata. Lift those hands to heaven. Leker Ebosha. Kila Bahande Gede. Libra Hado Shatali Adegede. Libra Hado Sakali Amanda Gede. Likara Bahado Satali Adegede. Leker Ebosha Tali Adegede. I need you to get ready with your victory shout. I declare this year God will act for you. Come on, raise a victory shout. 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 In Jesus' name. 
as you start this 2020, I release over you the blessing of a mother. The blessing of the breast and the womb. I declare that you will produce things this year and you will sustain it. Ah, you will not be a has-been in the name of Jesus. You will never be spoken about in past tense in the name of Jesus. This year, I declare it's the year for God to act for you. You will walk in clarity. You will have 2020 vision. You will walk in light. In the name of Jesus, I declare accuracy over you. Acceleration over you. There is nothing you will lift your voice to heaven about that God will not answer you. I declare while you are yet speaking, my God will release heaven's resources. This year, you dwell under open heavens. This year you will not struggle. This year you will not stumble. I declare this year you will be recognized. Ah, this year you will be set apart. Ah, you will be a city on a hill. You cannot be hidden. I declare this to be the year of your unveiling. I declare that all things are now ready. 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 Your appetite is enlarged. You experience the goodness of God on every side. You will not fail. You will not stumble. You will not struggle. All of heaven responds to you. I release all the angels to be on guard. You will not die this year. We will not mourn you this year. We will not bury you this year. I declare the power of God to be at work in your life. God's hand rests mightily on you. Lekedusa. Nothing will be missing. Nothing will be broken in your life. All things are now ready. Food is ready. All things are now ready. All things are now ready. I release you into a glorious 2020. This year, God is raising millionaires. And there's a Libra Tosa God is sending a wealth into the body. I declare this year you will encounter God like never before. Hey, Kadabosa, God is releasing gifts. Ah, Talaradea, the gifts of prophecy, the gifts of healing. Le Katabra Handogosa, Le Kerede, Le Kabado Shatayanegede, in the name of Jesus. Hey, Kadosa Tambra Handegede, Eh Malusata, Ye Bratoga di Shakale and Egede, Re Kadosata. Oh, the presence of God is so strong in the atmosphere. People are being healed right now. So if there's any sickness in your body, I need you to lift your hands to heaven. God is healing sicknesses right now. You are not allowed to go home with it. It's not on the table. Sickness is not on the table this year. Yes, 
Father, we thank you. We thank you. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 If you know you received your word tonight, come on, give God your victory shout. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. The presence of God is so strong in this room. Father, we thank you. We thank you for every word that you've spoken, for I know that none of your words will return to you void. I'm confident, oh God, that you are a God who keeps your word. You've never failed, and I know that you will not start now. Even the secret prayers, the things that have caused us to cry in the years past, you said you are compiling every blessing. And you are putting it together. So the blessings of 15 years we're getting in one year. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm more excited tonight. Listen, this year is not like any other year. It's not like any other year. I need you to understand that. Something happened here tonight. And it's going to have effect in your life for the next 10 years. So every word of prophecy that has ever gone over your life, we've activated it tonight. That's what God did. We've activated it when? So all things are now? All things are now? I need you to say it like you believe it. All things are now? So I need you to say this with me. Say, God is doing great things for me. In 2020. I will prosper in this land. In 2020. A hundredfold. Everything that has ever been spoken over my life. I activate it now. All things are now ready. And I declare to you as he said yesterday. On your marks set go